Американская фирма Transceptor Technology приступила к производству компьютеров «Персональный спутник». We are back and we've just finished reviewing this brand new REA solar panel. Now, warning, if you are an ACO fanboy, you are not going to like this video. What we're going to run you through is how you get from zero to hero and how you beat ACO in the solar panel game. I've got the power. Now, before we unveil this panel, I think the first thing for me is we're inside. We're not walking around a field. We're not waiting for it to be sunny so we can film. We are in the studio and this is version one. We're gonna take you through that on a separate video. But anyway, I'm super happy because we can film whenever we want videos like this. And this video is all about REA, where they have come from, where they are going. And we're gonna end on a review of a brand new product because their Type R panel has just been launched here in the UK. And we've got some pretty interesting data that proves its performance and it also backs up all of the claims that we have around REA and why Heatable love this panel. So let's get into it. Now the benefit of the studio is that I can have my laptop here and I don't have to remember everything word for word. So what we're going to do is start covering off REA, where they come from, how did this company go from being a consultant to a multinational manufacturer to producing their own panels. Well this all starts in 2010. A guy called Michael Morocco, he found REA and originally he is a consultant to the solar industry and he's working with a well-known household brand called LG. LG are launching a solar panel, they work with Michael and they release their module now. This module was called the LG Neon 350R. So the Neon R is out, it's in market, performing really, really well. And alongside this, Michael and LG are developing another product. Michael takes that on under his own steam and he launches his first panel in 2014. This is a bifacial, transparent back sheet dual glass solar module and it actually goes into testing in LG's Australia test plant and it outperforms the Neon R. So we've launched this panel, it's in market and it's 300 watt and it is outperforming this 350 Neon R in their own test center. And this is really the point for Michael where he says, I'm going on my own, I wanna do my own thing, I'm gonna start REA Power. And to give you some sort of background on times here, this is 2014. Now, in 2018, he launches his second panel, and this is a perk solar panel. So back then, really, you couldn't get N-type panels. Everything was a perk panel. It's 380 watt, but it has a pretty short lifespan because he's now moving on to a new technology. And this technology comes to the REA brand in 20. And towards the end of 2018, we start moving towards these HJT cells. Now, HJT is heterojunction technology. It's a solar cell that was pioneered by Sanyo back in 1985. And it essentially uses multi-layer film to increase the efficiency or the performance of the cell. So you have like different cell structures. They're able to capture sort of more low light. They have low lid. And what that means is you get better performance out of the panel. So at this point, the panel is 400 watt, it's HJT, and it's doing really, really well in market. Now, all the time that REA are selling panels, they're also spending lots of money on R&D, and they're doing loads of testing. The 400 watt original panel from 2018 is super successful, and it runs right up to 2021. In 2021, the panel starts to change. It's moving on to an all black design because sort of market forces have moved away from blue panels sort of silver frames that was the old stuff really aesthetics are really important to customers now so it's about designing a panel that is desirable both aesthetically as well as performance and this is where the fusion 2 series comes into effect fusion 2 essentially you've got two solar surfaces one on the front one on the rear and you've got that transparent back sheet that allows the light through to increase the performance so how do REA and Heatable start working together? Well, in 2022, 
two, we were starting to look at launching our solar proposal and we needed a reliable product that was gonna give additional performance. So the market really was made up of a mixed bag of perk panels, some of the end type stuff was starting to come through and we were introduced to Michael via a mutual friend. And what we loved and what instantly struck us about Michael was his passion for R&D and REA's focus on constantly improving their product. And we very much pitched ourselves around this product being the forefront of technology. We're now three years into this relationship. We have fitted tens and tens of thousands of these panels. They've been super reliable and we've always been at the forefront of technology. Quick recap we started off with that original lg beta the 300 watt panel generation 2 he launches this 380 watt panel but it's still perk technology generation 3 we're now on to hjt we're on to n type 400 watt peak panels generation 4 this is when heatable get involved now this panel starts off at 420 watt it's hjt it's bifacial it's all black it then goes to 440 watt and then the last generation he pushes it right up to 450 and now generation 5 and this <laughs> what <laughs> That's great, that was great. That's a... <laughs> could, you, could you do that again? Now, this is the panel. We actually launched this back at the Everything Electric show in April. And when we first saw it, we were like, yeah, it's an REA, it looks like an REA Fusion panel. Has it just had a 10 watt power uplift? But the answer to that is no. This panel has been developed with a project alongside Queensland University. Michael has been doing some testing on their facilities against some other well-known brands. We'll get onto that in a minute, but let's start with the headline power figure. 460 watt. Now, I know what you're thinking, in the Aco Neo stars 460 watt, they even do a 470 watt version. Well, I've got something for you on Aco later on in this video because it's not just about the headline figures. That is the STC test rig facility rating. Now, what you're also starting to see now on bifacial panels is something called BNPI. BNPI is when they test a proportion of light on the back of the panel. They combine it together, it's an official test, and the rating on this panel is 515 watt. But let's just forget that for a second and just use the standard front, the 460 watt. What they've managed to achieve with this panel is something called zero buzz bar technology and it's actually a printed cell. Now the buzz bar in a panel that collects all of the energy from all the cells via these little wires that go around it, put it into the leads and that's what powers your home. Your solar cells are what sit in your panel and the way that REA does stuff is that they have solar cells in the panel and between they have glass on both sides, it's double insulated and it allows light through. Now the actual cell is the latest generation. Like I said, it's this printed HJT. What is different is the way that the cells are all linked together because cells are linked by electrical connections. And usually what you do, you have a very thin little bit of silver or wire and that is fused on with heat. What some manufacturers do is they bring those cells closer together and that gives you more surface area. But REA don't really need to do that because their cells are super efficient and they produce a lot of power. But this is different. This is actually printed onto the cell. So all of the energy transfer is a printed connection. And what that does is put less stress on the cells, improves performance and improves the lifespan of the product. And it also degrades less over time because this panel in 30 years will have only dropped to 90% of its rated efficiency on day one. Now competitors, you're looking anywhere between 84 to 86% some of the high performers may be 88, 89, but 90.3 with this version of the product. As we mentioned at the start of the video, REA are big fans of HJT technology. 
they are sort of specialists in this field and what Ari are claiming with this panel is it is the most advanced HJT cell on the market. Now, while this is really relevant for us here in the UK, is HJT is really good at low light performance. We have seen this in our own tests. These panels, even the original 420s, the 440s, always outperformed in low light conditions. It's good for us to see that HJT is still a big part of this product. Apart from that, everything else is your standard REA diet. You've got cells on the front, you've got cells on the rear, and it's available in a DC version, which is your standard you know, DC panel, but you can also get it in REA's ACM, and it still holds the title for the world's most powerful ACM, and ACM is this panel with an Enphase IQ8HC. That is the range topping Enphase IQ8 series microinverter, and it comes bonded to this panel from factory. It's actually an Enphase endorsed product. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't want to say now. I don't want to say okay or so. Um... When you see data sheets for solar panels, if you're comparing apples for apples, you're comparing it on standard test conditions. But standard test conditions to real world are sort of two very different things. And Michael's always been a big advocate of real world testing. You might have seen a video on our channel where we put the original Fusion 2 up against hybrid system and we measured the performance with an independent data logger and we produce sort of like I think like 10 or 15 percent additional power well Michael's in Australia REA are based there they're in Queensland and in Queensland there's a university and within that university they have a research department because solar is a pretty big deal in Australia and Michael's been working with them to test this panel and what we've got now is some data to show you where we've had this panel and the original 420 on test and a static rig against some market leaders. And it is pretty interesting. So let's sit back down and we'll take a look at that. So this dashboard here is actually an end phase login for the Central Queensland University Solar Research Project. Now this is a two part test. We're looking at microinverters, but we're also looking at how different panels perform as well. And the test is for five panels. Let's go through each panel quickly to see who's in this race. Well, up top left, we've got the REA Type R460. That's this one here. We then got the Aco Neostar, the 455 watt version. We've got a SunPower P6, 405 watt, a Trina Vertex, 450 watt, and the original Fusion 2, the 420. Now, the SunPower isn't currently in the test. It's being decommissioned because something else is getting replaced. Have a guess what it is, leave a comment below. And REA and the university are running that test to see how it performs against the Type R460 with these HJT cells. Now, we have data for around 10 months. Now, in the month of June, which is winter in Australia, the REA Type R460 produces 54.5 kilowatt hours of usable energy. And in that same period, the Aco Neostar 455 did 50.4. Now the percentage difference of those two is just over 8%, even though there's a 1% more peak power in the REA than there is in the ACO, because obviously the REA is a 460 and the ACO is a 455. What is interesting in this is that ACO is a premium panel. We're not bashing ACO here. We actually fit ACO panels. There's a bit of misconception in market that we only fit REA panels, but that's not actually true. We will fit pretty much any panel. We're not governed to fit REA. We just fit REA because we rate them and they always overperform the test sheet. So we have fit ACO before, we fit JA, we fit Trina. Now Trina really is a mid-range panel. What is interesting is that in that same period on the same microinverter, the Trina 51.4. So it actually outperformed the ACO, even though the Trina is 450 and the ACO is 455. That's a pretty impressive panel. And we've also got the Fusion 2 here, the original 420 watt. Now it's a little outgunned here because it's only 420 watt peak rated 
but it is on the IQ8HC, so that's got a higher conversion power, a higher clipping rate on the actual microinverter, but that still produced 48.5 kilowatt hours of energy. And this is why we've always been so impressed with REA panels. Now, let's look at another month because June is not summer in Australia, it's winter. So let's look at something like January. Interestingly, the sun power is actually on in January. And the Type R, that produces 74.7 kilowatt hours. The Eco, 69.8 kilowatt hours. The Trina, 67.4, and the REA Fusion 2 420, that does 69.2, so pretty much the same as that Aco 455. Now, the peak difference between the Aco and the Type R is 7%, and the difference between the 420 Fusion and the Aco is just 0.8%. So a 420 against a 455, that is really impressive. Now, why this panel outperforms, I don't have the technical detail. All I have is the information from the university and Michael about this real world testing. What we are gonna do is when Michael's next over from Australia, he comes over frequently in the new studio, we're gonna have a bit of a podcast session and he can give us all of the minutiae, all of the reasons why this panel is such a high performing product. What we wanted to do is just show you the data that we had and we thought it was really interesting because it was done by the Central Queensland University, so it's not skewed by us. So one question you're all going to be asking is when can I get my hands on these panels? Well, right now we're in July, the very start of July, and we've just had the first delivery of 4,000 of the panels. Now, they are all sold, but we are getting another delivery in about four weeks. So if you do want to get a quote to have a 460 Type R panel installed on your property, either in that ACM version or in the DC variant, then all you need to do is head over to Heatable's website, book a design call with one of our design team, and they will get you a quote done and they will secure you some of this stock. Separate to that, if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a like. Also, are you subscribed to the Heatable YouTube channel? Because if you're not, you're gonna miss lots more content from this brand new studio. We've got so much coming to the channel and we do not want you to miss it, so make sure you are A, subscribed, and B, have that bell icon activated and apart from that i'll see you again shortly on the next heatable video yeah I just